Hello, everyone. We have a special guest here with us today, Nicole, who's going to explain to us something really cool. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up learning about tangent, if you were to ask me what's the definition of tangent, I would have two very different definitions in mind. One, tangent, oh yeah, that's something that like sort of barely touches your function or your circle, right? The same slope. And this totally different definition related to triangles, which is just sine divided by cosine, right? Or, or opposite over adjacent. So, but apparently, Nicole's gonna show us why in fact that uh, the triangle definition is not really a definition, but an implication of the first one. And really there's one definition and how it can explain everything. So Nicole, take it away. Yeah, so uh, I think I was in the same boat as you. I was originally taught the definition of tan theta sine upon cos, and I couldn't really, uh, in my head, piece the two together why this tangent is the same as sine upon cos. And a similar thing happened with secant, which is one upon cos, which is by definition a line that actually passes through the circle. So I've, I've created a small video here just to illustrate that the two definitions of tangent and similarly for secant are actually one and the same. So. So in a unit circle, we know that the Y coordinate of uh, the point, the end of the radius is sine theta and the X coordinate is cos theta. Could you remind us, Nicole, why it's sine and cosine again? Yeah, sure. So by definition, the radius of a unit circle, this white line here, that is equal to one unit in length. So sine theta, which is defined as opposite or the red over hypotenuse or the white would be sine theta here, the opposite upon one. So since it's upon one, we can actually say that sine theta and the opposite are equivalent. So I'm just gonna denote this opposite side or the Y coordinate of our point as sine theta. And similarly, our cos theta or the adjacent side are equivalent. And this stems from the fact that the hypotenuse is one, which is actually why unit circles are useful in the first place. If our radius was three, we'd call it three sine theta or three cos theta, but this just keeps it standard. Cool. So you can see as theta moves around, we have sine theta and cos theta changing accordingly. Theta, when it's closer to 90 degrees, we have a longer sine theta and a shorter cos theta. So now just drawing that tangent to geometrically define tan theta, as I mentioned previously. As you can see, when we draw this tangent to the circle at that point, we get two line segments. So let's arbitrarily call one of them tangent and the other one cotangent. They're both tangents, there's, not, there's nothing special about one over the other. It's just a matter of definition. It's like, why do you label a coordinate X comma Y and not Y comma X? It's the same way. Here, the one that intercepts X axis, we're gonna call that tangent. And the one that intercepts the Y axis, we're gonna call that cotangent. It's kind of interesting seeing that tangent can get even bigger as theta gets bigger. And that, that kind of speaks to like those bounds on tangent, you know, that tangent can kind of shoot out to infinity as your theta gets closer and closer to 90. Yeah, yeah that, that sign is getting bigger as well. So it's like a sign gets yeah. bigger, tangent's getting bigger. Yeah, that's an interesting point to note because you can see that these properties of tangent, which you had learned, the fact that it's sine upon cos, that also holds true in this geometric definition. So it seems like the two definitions were kind of equivalent, but right now we just have a rough idea of it. So let, let's try to go ahead and actually prove that this tan theta, just this, this segment in the unit circle, which keeps changing with theta, it's somehow the same as sine theta upon cos theta, which we had learned previously. It, it, it probably seems... Uh, it probably seems like two different definitions still. So we need to go ahead and dive into the proof to see that they're actually the same thing. So in this triangle that I've drawn here, which you can see with my mouse, the one with the hypotenuse as the orange or tan theta, we know that the perpendicular or tan theta is, uh, I mean, or the tangent is always perpendicular to the radius. So we have a 90 degree angle out here and using the angle sum theorem, we know that since the sum of all angles in a triangle should be 180 degrees, if we have theta and 90, this angle must be 90 minus theta. I mean, we can sum it up and check. 90 minus theta plus theta gives us 90, plus 90 gives us 180 degrees. So right. using that, we can actually show that this little angle here, it has to be 90 minus theta. And the reason I've shown this, 
is that we can use this to prove that tan theta is equal to sine theta upon cos theta. So let's start by taking the sine of this angle here, 90 minus theta. By definition, it should be opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is sine theta upon tan theta. Hmm. We know that sine of 90 minus theta is equivalent to cos theta. And we know this because if you look at this triangle here, our original triangle, here if we have theta, since this is perpendicular, this should also, this should be 90 minus theta. So if we have sine of theta, which should be the opposite side, that will be equal to cos of 90 minus theta, because for 90 minus theta, it would be the adjacent side. So just using that property here, we can simplify our LHS of sine 90 minus theta to cos theta. It's, it's important to note that this is not a different equation. I've simply simplified the LHS for our own convenience, because what we wanted to show is that upon rearranging, we get tan theta mm. upon sine theta. So we get sine wow. theta upon cos theta. That was beautiful. So you're basically, you, you have this thing, it's really cool because you didn't assume that tangent was sine over cosine. You just started with the circle, you put this tangent line, and now, you know how we usually see the theta, and we can usually visualize that length, that, that vertical length, that's sine, that horizontal length, that's cosine. And for tangent, we just have to imagine dividing them. But no, yeah. here you can, you can see that, that, that slant, that orange length, and that length is tangent. And you define that, but you showed that with, with this proof that that length is always equal to sine over cosine. Uh, and that's an implication, not yeah. a definition. I I think it's just a lot easier to digest that tan theta is tangent, not yeah. sine upon cos. And then after that, if we do a little bit of algebra and some geometrical proofs, then we can get that tan theta is also sine theta upon cos theta. But primarily tan theta is just this tangential line. The same way sine theta was the uh, opposite side, cos theta was the adjacent side. Tan theta is just this one more length, which also changes with theta. Wonderful, wonderful awesome. work. Thank you so much.